everyone. My name is uh, Bakhnirina Rabevuic and I am the second assistant of the Executive Secretary of the CPGU, the Unit for Prevention and uh, um, Support to Emergency Management attached to the Prime Minister's Office and which is the um, permanent entity in charge of the strategy on DRM in Madagascar. So it is a great honor for me to talk about uh, a financial protection mechanism today during this uh, side event. Uh, but first of all, I would like to say that Madagascar is the fourth country most vulnerable uh, to climate change all over the world. And in accordance to the Sunday framework, uh, in our uh, nat national strategy, we plan to enhance um, uh, financial resilience by developing uh, financial protection mechanisms. So today I would like to talk about four uh, protection financial uh, mechanisms uh, which are developed by the CPGU uh, in collaboration with ministerial department and different um, uh, partners. So, uh, first of all, I, I will talk about the CAT DDO financing with a different drawdown option. Mm, for that mechanism, the World Bank uh, has granted $50 million for DRM, and also there is 10 million euro credit uh, from the French Development Agency. And the CAT DDO funding helped the government to make, to lead a response to flood in 2020 and also to make response to COVID-19. But uh, this uh, CAD DDO mechanism uh, is based on uh, conditions which are linked to some reforms such as uh, institutional strengthening on DRM, uh, strengthening financial resilience and infrastructure resilience, and also integration of climate resilience into sectoral development policy. After that, the second financial protection mechanism is the National Contingency Fund, which is one of the conditions recommended by CATIDO mechanism. Actually, there is a need to have resources that are available in advance and that can be mobilized quickly in case of a disaster. Uh, each year, 2 billion arriar are secured from the state budget and uh, the use of this fund is governed by a manual and uh, its uh, management is uh, the responsibility of the Ministry of Economy and Finance and also the BNGRC. The third mechanism is the immediate response mechanism on M or MRI, uh, which allows the quick access to a funding that corresponds to 5% of undisbursed IDA fund under certain conditions, such as uh, an official declaration of disaster or emergency, uh, the submission by the government of uh, an emergency response implementation plan, and also the approbation by the World Bank of the doc documents on MRI. The fourth mechanism is the insurance with African Risk Capacity or ARC. Madagascar signed the ARC Treaty on January 2014 and ratified it four years later. And thanks to the support of the African Development Bank through the uh, program, uh, Madagascar paid the first premium to ARC Limited, uh, 500,000 in 2019, and uh, because of civil drought, uh, the country received more than $2 million from ARC uh, as uh, insurance indemnity. So this fund helped the government to lead emergency response actions. So in terms of humanitarian aid, more than 600,000 people could benefit from food distribution and also Russian protection is granted to uh, 2,700 uh, vulnerable households and uh, uh, as well as nutritional supplement for children under, under five years old, breastfeeding and pregnant women and also older people. But apart from that, the government has also led water supply to uh, more than uh, 58,000 households and also provided medicines to more than 80 healthcare centers. And um, moreover, in order to contribute in providing sustainable solutions uh, to fight against 
drought in accordance to government instructions. Uh, the, the insurance indemnity also helped to construct new health center and uh, it also uh, allowed to, to make a census uh, in order to build a single database on drought. So because all of that, we can say that the ARC insurance really helped to reinforce government efforts and especially government leadership in disaster risk management and disaster risk re reduction. It also helped to complete the financial gap uh, to strengthen the population's access to basic food and drinking water. Uh, it really helped to, to save lives during a very difficult time. And apart from that, the indemnity insurance also contributes to reduce the vulnerability, to strengthen resilience, to strengthen the physical capacity of work labor, uh, workforce, and also to contribute uh, to the implementation of sustainable solutions. Um, apart from that, I would like to say that Madagascar is still the only African country that has subscribed to two types of uh, uh, insurance with ARC, because since 2019, Madagascar has also subscribed to the tropical in tropical cyclone insurance, but up to now, there is no disbursement yet because of the absence of severe cyclone. Well, now in terms of outlook, Madagascar plans to strengthen the capacity response of the country to drought through the collaboration with the World Food Programme through ARC Replica. The government strategy uh, to fight against drought consists of combining emergency response to resilience activity in order to really promote uh, the sustainable development. So uh, this brings me to end to the end of my speech. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. For this second topic, I would like to share with you another aspect of our mandate, the drought management. Madagascar has been at the center of the attention during the COP26 in Glasgow, Scotland this year, due to the climate change fueled drought in the south of, of the country. In Madagascar, there have been drought especially in the great south of the country, which is an area of semi-arid climate, but the severity of the situation has increased due to climate change. In the early 2000s, we had a drought early warning system that functioned for 15 years. We also developed 10 years back the first contingency plan for drought with a system of three shawls. These tools and the knowledge are still available and could be reactivated with some investment. They could contribute greatly to the drought risk management. We have an inclusive approach to emergency preparedness in each community where we are doing contingency plan and setting early warning system together with the partner. We ensure the mapping of the most vulnerable segment of the community. Women, children, person living under disabilities, the elderly and others. We have also set up the National Vulnerability Committee in order to organize and coordinate the vulnerability assessment and the vulnerability analysis. This committee is composed by different stakeholders who comes from different sector of intervention in order to broaden the topic of discussion and starting from this, focus on a very specific indicators that should be monitored for more efficient early warning system on food 
insecurity and malnutrition. One of the tools that we have been implementing in Madagascar is the Household Economy Analysis, which is a livelihood-based framework for analyzing the way people obtain access to the thing they need to survive and prosper. The same for IPC, which stands for Acute Food and Security Classification, and which provides strategically relevant information to decision maker that focuses on short-term objectives to prevent, mitigate, and decrease the severe food insecurity that threatens life and livelihoods. At this moment, since October 2021, the BNGRC, to which I uh, belong to, has been appointed by the government to do the coordination of all emergencies response led by all the stakeholders in the great south of the country and make sure that we have a specific consideration on the link between emergency, reco emergency recovery, resilience and development. DRR has to be considered in every step of cycle of the cycle of disaster and risk management. That's why not only it is important to have to have it mainstream in every sectorial plan and program and also development plan, strategy and program. As the main department in charge of coordinating and implementing the national strategy of disaster and risk management, the BNGRC is then really engaged on improving what has been already done in order to help these localities that have been suffering of consequences of drought to recover as soon as possible from these years of problems of uh, food insecurity and malnutrition, adopt and conduct proactive approach for enhancing drought resilience of local community. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, good evening, everybody from Madagascar. It's a great honor for me to speak with you today on the occasion of this AF Africa Regional Platform for TRR to briefly introduce and develop Madagascar and TRR or National Platform for Disaster Risk Reduction. Madagascar is a great island situated in the southwest of the Indian Ocean. It is the fourth most vulnerable country in the world to climate change and the first country most exposed to natural hazard like cyclone, flood and not the Eastern Africa. The impacts of disaster are increasingly significant and are expected to increase with the climate change. To better manage risks, the DRM structure in Madagascar has been split into parts. On the one hand, there are the operational structure, which is led by the BNGRC, in charge of emergency response. And on the other side, we have a strategic structure where there is first the CNGRC, the National Council, secondly the CPGU, and thirdly the NPR. In recent years, due to its multidisciplinary as well as cross-cutting nature, the importance of TRR has been increasingly recognized as multi sectors and multi hazards. Previously, Madagascar focused on ex post response activities to deal with these disasters. Today, the country has realized the need to invest in 
and excellent service. So, the creation of the platform was initiated and officially set uh, by the decree number 11045 on 7 May 2021, and uh, which was signed by the Prime Minister, Head of Government. The NPGRA is attached to the Prime Minister's office and the CPGU chairs it. The platform is including government members, NGOs, intergovernmental organizations, civil societies, private sectors, academicians, and universities, all sectors, both public and private, and strategic frameworks, and sectoral policies, as well as in the development of various projects, the countries exposed to risks and natural hazards. This is why GRR becomes for everyone's business. We must also recognize that only a person, a population, and a country resilient to various hazards and their consequences can afford to lay the foundation for sustainable development. The platform regularly brings together all stakeholders and actors in the area to advocate for this area at the strategic level. The platform's activities are mainly focused on strengthening coordination and synergy in as well as promoting resilience. In brief, the platform was created to be a space for exchange, capitalization, cooperation, dialogue. The operationalization of this platform constitutes a commitment for the government for its Institutional strengthening of uh, GRM and GRR. Its uh, realization will allow us to, mo to move forward and to continue to benefit us apart from the CATICO, a mechanism according to an agreement uh, concluded with the World Bank and the French Development Agency in 2019, and therefore expects in the near future the country collaboration system of a partner. So all this to tell you that the creation of this GRR is the continuation of efforts undertaken by the government and also the concretization of its commitment within the framework of the strengthening of GRM and GRR because in fact this NPGRR is one of the key players in the implementation of actions and activities outlined in standard frameworks from 2015 to 2030 for I also take this opportunity to share you and remind the government's in the fight against short, the great south of Madagascar, which invites all stakeholders, national and international, to pull their efforts in order to find together lasting solutions and that can be uh, emergency actions resilience activities in order to achieve that objective of real development in a sustainable manner. So, ladies and gentlemen, if the future of the next generation for Madagascar lies in our hands, the time is now let's work together and convert our efforts against disaster, climate change, and the pandemic of COVID-19. Let's start our challenge adapted for vulnerable island with strong economic and natural potentials like Madagascar. Thanking you already for your, your consideration of island states and especially to the importance that all of us do for GRR at all levels. With that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. <music>
Uh, I am the general project coordinator of uh, Bureau National de Gestion des Risques et des Catastrophes, or BNGRC, here in Madagascar. BNGRC is uh, a general directorate in the Ministry of uh, Interior and Decentralization. It is in charge of uh, coordinating and implementing the national strategy of disaster and risk management. In this video, I would like to share with you how we are operationalizing in Madagascar the priority four of Sendai framework, which invites us to strengthen disaster preparedness for response, take action in anticipation of events, and ensure that capacities are in place for effective response and recovery. Indeed, preparedness is one of our top priorities in the country, as Madagascar is exposed to floods, cyclones, drought, and other hydrometeorological hazards. Our country is unfortunately also exposed to tsunami, epidemic, locust invasion, landslide, earthquakes, and so on and so forth. Review and test the contingency plan is currently happening for cyclone and flood in these months of November and December. Institutional departments, UN agencies, NGOs, private sector, specialists of communication, volunteers, and other partners are together reviewing and updating the national contingency plan, the prepositioning of stocks, of stock, and the sensitization campaign with communities. The contingency plan is a key operational document which, once activated, help the BNGRC and the authority to better coordinate the multi-sectorial response and better prepare the early report. For the last five years, for example, we activated twice the national contingency plan for floods and cyclones. First, in March 2017, with the tropical cyclone in our classified cate category four out of five for cyclone global classification, which meant made landfall over Antala district, northeastern part of Madagascar, swept through the country and affected 52 out of 190 districts. And then in January 2020, area of intertropical convergence, broad and stable weather, disturbances and heavy rains in the northern part of the country. It caused not only widespread and deadly flooding in the in this part of the country, but also localized flood and landslides in Alautamangu, Analamang, Pittsburgh, Buen, Melek, and Sofia region. This situation invited us to activate the National Contingency Plan, which integrate the involvement of all the stakeholders under the leadership of the government. Of Madagascar. Our contingency plan on cyclone and flood is based on a specific scenario which are updated every year. It is elaborated with early warning system, existing capacities, coordination mechanism to be respected, and SOP, SOPs for each cluster and stakeholders. We make sure that all stakeholders keep in their mind that every sectorial response to be conducted in case of emergency now in Madagascar should take into consideration that we are still in the context of COVID-19. These last two years, we also deepened the use of new technology in disaster and risk management and explore the forecast-based financing approach to better react before emergency strike. This is an, an innovation adopted and experimented in Madagascar in order to have standard operating procedure which define what should be taken at what probability magnitude of forecast by whom. And to conclude, I would like to mention our next step for enhance emergency preparedness. Map the existing resource in terms of early warning system tools and partners. For this, we have requested the activation of cadre mechanism. Then advocate for increased resource of PNGRC so we can have increased personal personnel at the national level and an operational presence at the local level to support authority in enhancing the local preparedness 
and have budget for DRR activities. And lastly, we are doing our best in deploying efforts to integrate a risk management approach in a merge in emergency response and prepare. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you.